Hi, everybody. Welcome to the riveting topic of Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points, or HACCP, for EV193 and Wine Wrap Operations Management. Today, we're going to talk about basically two things, uh, the Food Safety Management Act and why we're having to learn this and apply it to our business, and then the hazard analysis and critical control points that we're going to have to put in place to make sure that we are not only making quality wine, but also making sure that we follow the state and federal uh, guidelines that are now upon us uh, as food. So FISMA, what is this? The Food Safety Management Act. This was signed into law a number of years ago. It was the first major overhaul of the FDA. Uh, started back in 2001, but it's come a long way. So basically it says this, subpart A, which is the piece we're going to talk about today, is that there has to be an education and training component. Each individual engaged in manufacturing, processing, packing, or holding food, including temporary or seasonal personnel, or in the supervisory thereof, must have the education, training, or experience, or a combination thereof, necessary to manufacture, process, pack, or hold clean and safe food as appropriate to the individual's assigned duties and receive training in the principles of food hygiene and food safety, including the importance of the employee health, personal hygiene as appropriate for the food, the facility, and the individual's assigned duties. Additional qualifications for supervisory personnel may be required. Records that document this training. So you have to show that you've done that. Um, and then you also have to follow good manufacturing practices, sanitary facilities, and controls. And of course, record keeping. Now I see this and my brain wants to go, ah, it just hurts. Um, and uh, this type of language doesn't process well for me. So let me, so let me make this a little bit simpler for those that don't do government speaking. So get some training on how to be clean. You've done that. Good job. Now you're going to get training on how to maintain a HACCP plan and put one together. So great, check, you've got that done. You're already in a supervisory capacity. Pat yourself on the back, bravo. Write down how you clean. That's the simplest thing. That's the one thing that's been very, very clear in this whole act is that you need to have a SOP for your cleaning procedures. Um, feel free to just borrow the one off the of Google Drive. It's all yours. Um, and then you'll have something that you can use in your winery. And then you need to keep some records of your cleaning and fruit handling. You need to be doing this anyhow. Um, you've got to have a record of fruit receipt. And then you also need to probably talk about whenever you rack your wine to tank that you've done a visual check and at least some sort of sanitation process. So this is HACCP. And this is the, this is the foundation of HACCP. Hazard analysis and critical control points. So you have a hazard. What is that hazard? We'll look at it. We're gonna do a little bit of analysis. Um, and then we'll do some critical control points, um, things that we'll set a limit on. We're going to talk about how we control it. And then what are those uh, points that you have that you're going to install in your process? So what are some critical issues we might have? Well, this could be one. Maybe you don't want to have mold growing around your bungs. So maybe you wanna take a look at how you clean things. Maybe you have a dirty press that's filthy and you're gonna document how you're gonna clean that up. Uh, maybe you've got some mold um, growing on a tank and maybe you should do a walk around once a week to make sure that if you have any hot spots, they're getting cleaned up. That's a drain with a rat in it. Unfortunately, uh, thanks to my setup right now, it's not letting me bring it to the front, but you can kind of see some, some remnants of it. And maybe uh, a weekly walk around SOP and cleaning up for mold and dead rodents. Um, and this one in particular is one of my favorites, which is a, a dirty O-ring. And this looks pretty simple, but that is the ring that seals the bottle on a bottling line. And I uh, was called into a winery that had a bottling line and they had a problem that every in every single case of their Riesling, one bottle re-fermented. And I looked the owner dead in the eye and I said, you have a 12 head filler, don't you? And he said, yeah, we do. How did you know that we have a 12 head filler? And I said, well, let's go take a look at the, the filler itself. And all of the seats were fine. And that's a valve seat uh, for the bottle where the bottle presses up against. And what they would do is they would steam the line, but push the seats up and out of the way, and they didn't clean the seats themselves. And this one had been pretty heavily damaged and was covered in God knows what. 
And uh, voila, every time uh, that bottle got filled, it splashed a little bit on there. And there was probably a nice colony of yeast. And a couple of yeast got into the bottle every single time, even though they'd sterile filtered it. And uh, one bottle in every case re-fermented and blew the cork out. So um, perhaps they needed uh, some SOPs for their bottling line inspection. Uh, and uh, immediately after a meeting with me, they, they did start doing such things. And I don't think they've had a re-fermentation issue since. So when we talk about cleaning, I think this is the big one. You know, what's our hazard? Well, we've got microbes all around. I mean, we, we engage in a, a fairly infectious process known as fermentation. So our hazard is, is literally grape juice and microbes. That's it. We're identifying that as our problem. We have something that is rich in nutrient for lots of microbi <clears throat> microbiological uh, bugs to, to grow in. So what's our analysis? How do we analyze for clean? What is clean? Well, clean's pretty simple. Clean something you can see, touch, taste, and feel. And if you take a look at the winery at this point in time, you can see that the floors are clean. There's no dirty valves. Everything is pretty well clean. So your analysis for cleanliness is pretty simple. It's just a simple visual check. Walk by and if it looks clean, it's clean. You can't analyze for sanitation. We'll talk about that with your eyes. You'll have to use something more advanced than that. So in this case, you walk around the winery and your analysis is simply a walk around and check. Where's your critical control point? Well, this is the point where training becomes so absolutely important. Um, you're going to set critical limits. What is the limit that you have for dirtiness on the floor? Is it just visual? Do you have to see a slime mold? Do you need to see yeast on the floor? Do you need to see something? Or, or is it just good enough to be clean? And what is that? And all you have to do is walk your employees through and say, hey, this is what we expect. It needs to be this way. Um, and your critical limits on your floors and hoses are going to be very different than that on your tanks and your bottling line because it's not going to be just visual. You're going to have to make sure that they're, they're considerably cleaner than uh, just your floors are. Um, but general good housekeeping is important. Um, you're going to have to have an SOP for cleaning. You've got to have a standard operating procedure for cleaning. That is required. You should probably have a sign off on it that uh, your employees give it to you once a week. You say that it's been done and you sign off on it and give an, give an inspection of the winery. Now, obviously, if you're a one person show, that's a little bit different, but you should still be going through that process anyway to show that you are actively engaged in this process of making sure the winery uh, is, is clean and sanitary. Now, point. When do you have corrective action? I take a look at this picture and I'm pretty prepared to take some corrective action. What is the point you're going to take corrective action? In this case, we have something that is filthy uh, and that is uh, not questionable. It is what it is. So you need to visually check for things. Just take a look for tar traits, like a look for biofilms, Dirty drains, oh my gosh, that is a hot spot to end all hot spots. Uh, sampling valves, and if things aren't clean, you take corrective action. That easy, you just rewash the equipment. That's it. Create a cleaning SOP so that your employees know how to do it. And you should have trained them on it, and if they're confused and they forgot because they're not very bright, they can read your very simple point-by-point -point SOP to go clean things. Really, really, really simple. Um, and then regularly, you should review and update your cleaning SOPs, which uh, one of you fortunate uh, groups is going to get to do. So keys to good HACCP are really simple. There are seven principles. You conduct a risk analysis. Where is the wine at high risk? Is it at high risk when it's in the juice phase? Is it high risk when it's in the middle of fermentation? Is it high risk before it goes to bottle? Um, and then at that point, you're going to identify your critical control points. So if you have an issue, say, with fruit rot, you're going to add more SO2 at the crusher, up to 100 parts, perhaps, something like that. Um, and say that when you're going to go to bottle, um, that you're sterile filtering any wine with residual sugar. And the way that you're verifying for sterility is some sort of a microbiological analysis or something like that. Um, and then you'll uh, establish some critical limit value. What is the limit? What is the most you can accept in any you know, circumstance? 
And then you establish a monitoring and inspection process, which is literally just walking around and taking a look to make sure everything is done. Establish monitoring actions to make sure that you know when to do it and when somebody else needs to do it uh, and what they need to do in order to observe the tank or the press or uh, anything in particular that they need to, to keep clean. Um, and you know, you establish a review procedure. So once a year you go through your SOPs, which the ones that you don't do, I'm gonna do to make sure our SOPs are completely up to date and ready to go. And then we establish some sort of documentation that we've been doing that. So make sure you update your date when you reviewed it and then I'll uh, sign that into action. Um, and so we just have to do that. And it's just a once a year process. You get out the SOPs, you review them, make sure they're up to date. And then uh, any employees you have, you make sure that they're informed on those SOPs. So instead of cleaning, let's talk about sanitation something that isn't so easy to see. So in this case, our hazard is microbes. And without a microscope, you can't see them. You can't touch them. You can't feel them. You don't know they're there. And so there might be a point in a wine's life that we get particularly concerned about sanitation. And for me, that is usually uh, on finished wine that has residual sugar. So wines like our Muscat, which when you think about the fact that we bottle that while we're fermenting all around um, and trying to sterile bottle a wine that's got 50 grams of residual sugar in it, which is double that of champagne. And if those wines did get any type of microbiological uh, infection, especially the yeast, uh, those wines would explode with tremendous force. So we have to be very concerned about that. So we have some particularly important things that we go through uh, when we're bottling uh, to make sure that this doesn't happen. So our way for uh, doing an analysis for our sanitation is we're gonna do time and temperature. Uh, we don't have an ATP swabber, they're 3000 bucks, but if I was a little bigger winery, I'd get one. It's something I'm, I'm looking into but basically what we do is we set the whole bottling line up with all of the things uh, from the membrane filter over. We take the temperature up to a certain temperature. In our case, we try to get it up north of 200 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, and in that process, uh, we wanna get it north or, or 100 degrees centigrade. We wanna get it north of those, those temperatures because that creates a situation where you have pretty much instantaneous uh, pasteurization of the of the winery line itself. And we take that temperature from the coldest spot on the bottling line. So we go pick a really thick piece of metal and uh, take our temperature probe and put it there to choose our, our temperature time, uh, temperature that that's when we set our clock. And, and realistically in about 10 minutes we get there, but uh, we always like to over, overkill that. So here's some guidelines for you. If you really wanna make sure that you're there, um, that we go to 20 minutes at 200 degrees Fahrenheit uh, to ensure that we have sterilized that bottling line post the membrane filter. Um, and I, I recommend that. This has been around for a long time. And if you put this in your SOP for sanitation on your bottling line, you'll be good to go. So here we are steaming the line. And if you take a look where that hose goes in, it's before the membrane filter. So the kind of interesting thing is, as long as the wine's really well sterile filtered, that membrane filter acts as an absolute membrane. It does not let any microbes through. So as long as we get everything hot after that, we can have a few yeast in the pump. We can have a few bacteria in the tank um, and, and that membrane filter will take care of it. Um, again, mem membrane filters don't hold a lot of dirt um, or microbes, so we want to make sure that wine has been pretty sterile filtered before, you know, in our case with the Crosslow filter, um, and uh, that we're only catching any rogue bacteria that happen to be living uh, in the pump or in the hoses, you know, because we're using those for transferring non-sterile wine on a regular basis. You know, no matter how much we do a triple dip or soak or otherwise, you're never going to eliminate all of the, the yeast and bacteria from that system. They're around. And so um, unless you're constantly taking every piece of your equipment up to 200 degrees on a regular basis, 
uh, you're not you're not doing that. So here we are uh, sanitizing our bottling line. So where is our critical control point? We have training. Um, the thing is with a bottling line, uh, normally I would take you all down and train you how to do it. Um, uh, so if we get a chance to, I'm hoping we will have that opportunity. Um, and in this case, uh, we want to do training. How do you set up the line? How do we make sure that we, we do that? How do we get enough steam to it so that it, it uh, is, is uh, a completely sterile setup? And our critical limit on this is really simple. It's none. We have no tolerance for any bacteria or yeast at all. How are we checking on that? We're just doing that with time and temperature and hope. Um, if we got some swabs, we could do that, and some wineries do. They will consistently do DNA swabs during bottling to make sure nothing's growing or building up on the line. And of course, we're doing that with an SOP for cleaning and sterilizing our bottling line. We have a sign-off before we bottle. Um, every one of our bottling forms has a sign-off on it. Is this sterile filtered? Check yes or no. And if you are saying no, why? And so if we're bottling a 18% alcohol fortified wine that's been sitting outside for 10 years, we're not too concerned about that. Any microbiological processes are going to happen on that. They're, they're not going to happen in bottle. But on the Muscat, a very different tolerance. Um, so in that case, we are definitely signing off that that's been sterile filtered, that we've done a sterile bottling line check beforehand, uh, and that goes in the file with the wine um, along with, uh, with everything. So that way, if we ever had an inspection, we'd be completely cleared as to the fact that we did everything as much as we could, um, above board. And so last thing is, how do we do it? How do we monitor and record this? So, um, this is it. You monitor, you record. Um, realistically, it's pretty simple. When, before we go to bottle, I have a time, a temperature and an employee that we did on the front end. And then we send everything in for bottling scorpions. So all these wines that you see right here are wines that we have used analysis on to make sure they're sterile filtered. Um, the, and so every year we go through this and we check every single wine to see if there's anything there. Now in the past, um, if you look at uh, these other ones uh, from the Aligote and the RVM, we had run some scorpions where there was uh, some presumptive hits on uh, Saccharomyces, which was a little scary because uh, there was a, a touch of sugar in the, the RVM. And there was also another one that was the Riesling in 2017. We saw these little bits of uh, uh, Riesling, so a little bit of yeast in the Riesling. And we, we freaked out a little bit because it only takes a couple of cells to have an issue. Well, scorpion analysis aren't perfect. They will take a piece of a bacteria that may have gotten broken off. It'll read the DNA from it and say it's there. And maybe it's just a, a piece of the back, you know, the Easter bacteria. So we did a, a culturing where we took that, um, those wines that had those uh, yeast and bacteria on them and did a, a culturing where we, we had uh, ETS plate them and they're, they were totally sterile. Um, so it was a, a false positive, but it's better to know and have the records. And, um, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's cheap insurance, uh, when you look back on how things could go wrong. So kind of finishing this up, having a HACCP plan is critical to the modern winery. You've got to have some sort of a HACCP plan. Uh, the thing is create a plan that's easy to read and understand. It's easy to maintain and can easily be recorded. Um, the terms are big. They're kind of scary. The speak is big. It's kind of scary, but the reality is, is just keep it simple. Keep it on a one page and keep it so that this is something that anybody can accomplish, uh, depending on the size of your business. If it's just you easy, but if you're working in a larger winery, uh, especially when you start thinking about the, the, the people that work at some of these bigger wineries, in the middle of nowhere, the the caliber of employee you get, you know, may not have, um, you know, much less a, a high school education, maybe very limited in how much they can can read. Um, and so you have to keep it as, as pretty, you know, elementary as possible to ensure that your employees can be trained, they can understand and they can execute it um, and uh, do it properly and safely. Uh,
that's it. Good luck with uh, putting together your HACCP plans for your uh, business plan.